Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. Good effort, Meg. Today, I'm going to be sharing a super special project with you guys, and that is I am making some wedding gifts for my brother-in-law and soon-to-be sister-in-law. During the entire course of their relationship, cooking has always been something that they've loved doing together, and they're both really, really good at. And so I wanted to create something that was practical and useful, something that would last them a really long time, and also celebrate the thing that they enjoy doing together. So of course I landed on I wanted to make them some aprons. Now because I don't know how to do anything simply and I just want to always take my crafts to the next level, I didn't want to stop at just making a simple cooking apron. I don't think there's anything wrong with those. I just really wanted to make this extra special and really them. Now their style is they're super cool. They're very like outdoorsy. They kind of have that cool vintage vibe about them. Like they just really embody that style that I wish I could, but I'm not nearly cool enough to do. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that I included some neat like leather details and some metal details. So I went to the internet and I started looking at different styles of aprons from like workshop aprons to pottery aprons to cooking aprons and found this picture of an apron on Pinterest and I'm using this as my inspiration for these aprons and I hope you guys are excited and you stick around to watch the whole thing because we're gonna get into leather working which I've never done before we're gonna get into rivet installation grommet installation and a lot of little details that towards the end of this video, once it starts coming all together, I think it really just takes these aprons to the next level. So without further ado, let's get started. So you're gonna need some craft paper or some pattern making paper. Then you're gonna need some chalk, some pattern weights, scissors, rotary cutter, pins, seam ruler, a regular ruler, and some top thread if you'd like. Then I decided to trace my pattern using an existing apron that I had, some heavy duty cotton canvas fabrics, some extra large eyelets, a swivel hook, double cap rivet tools, and double cap rivets. Then I picked up some leather and a stamping tool from Tandy Leather. Now the very first thing I did was laid out my apron on top of my craft paper and just roughly traced it all the way around. And then I added some seam allowance. I believe I added a half inch to every edge and shirred up some of those lines. And then I just cut out my pattern piece. I added some information on here and I decided for the straps, I wasn't gonna make a pattern, I will just measure and cut. Then for the pocket, I just took a few measurements, but mainly I just put my pattern paper on top and felt for the edges of the pocket and just traced it around with the ruler and shirred up any of the lines, made sure it was even, added a seam allowance. And then I just started cutting out my fabrics. So for the straps, I'm just drawing on the shape and then I'll cut them out rather than making a pattern piece. But I did forget to account for double the width. So I measured out here one and a quarter inch wide straps, but I should do two and a half inches wide by 64 inches long. And you'll understand once we get later down the line. And here are all of the pattern pieces cut out and I went ahead and added the interfacing to the straps as well. Okay, so to start, because I didn't account for the entire width of the straps for the apron that I was using as reference, I cut four of the strips for the straps and to make them, I am going to put right sides together and then stitch along both sides and then we'll flip it right side out. So that's what we're gonna do first. 
And because I'm winging this uh, entire apron, I am just gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance and hopefully that will be enough. Okay, so something I want to try before I stitch along this edge, to make it easy to pull right side out, I'm gonna take this piece of scrap yarn. I tied five knots into the end here, and I'm just going to stitch it on the right side, right about here, and then I'm going to make sure it's on the inside of the piece, and in theory, once it's all sewn together, I can just pull on the yarn, and it will turn my piece right side out. Have no idea if this is actually gonna work, but I think it's worth giving a try, and let's see if it works. So I'm just gonna base this on, like here. I think that'll work. All right, so now I'm just gonna tuck the yarn on the inside of this piece. Okay. So it's tucked and sandwiched in on the inside, so now I'm going to stitch along the other side. So now we're going to try to pull this right side out. So I'm just going to pull and like, just going to pull and slide it down. All right, so that actually worked quite well. So I'm gonna take this over to my iron and give it a press and we'll see what it looks like. So here is what the strap looks like when it's pressed flat. And I am very happy with the way that this turned out. So yeah, looks good to me. And now I'm just gonna add top stitching to both sides on each of the straps. So next, I am going to sew the apron piece. So this is just the main portion of the apron. And I have folded over each edge a quarter inch and then again another quarter inch. So that way the raw edge is going to be tucked underneath. And I was sure to fold and press the curved edges first. Then I did the top edge, then I did the bottom edge, and then I did the side edge. Just so that way the corners and edges were all caught and looked nice and neat. So I am just going to stitch along these lines and yeah, and then we'll be done with the apron pieces. So I just did the same with the pocket pieces. So I just folded over a quarter inch and then another quarter inch and then pressed the seams all the way around and then I pinned it. But in order to make clean edges here, I'm actually going to undo some of these pins. And we're gonna unravel these top corner bits. But we still, because we pressed it, we can still see where those fold lines are. So we're gonna flip to the right side and we are going to undo here, but we're gonna fold right along this line here like that. And I'm just going to pin it like that. So we've unfolded the side and folded the top bit over. We're gonna do the same on this side. So we're just unfolding and then folding this back on itself right along that seam line that we created. And just pin that into place as well so it doesn't move around. And right here where you can see this seam, essentially where it's pinned tight and we didn't remove the pins, we're gonna stitch right here at the top but we're not gonna go past our fold line. We wanna be as close to that fold line as possible without 
going right on top of it. So right about there. And don't forget to go forward and back on those stitches as well. So just like that. And we're gonna do that on the other side as well. Then we're gonna take those two corners that we just stitched like that and we're gonna cut out a little rectangle. Again, not going through or stitching and we wanna go just up against it like that. And like that. And what this is gonna allow is it's going to tuck in when we push this up. But now we're gonna have a nice, clean, finished pocket edge, just like that. So I'm gonna do this on the other side as well. And then we're gonna top stitch all the way around, making sure that our seams are laying nice and flat before we stitch this onto our piece. So I went ahead and pinned the front pocket onto the apron and then we are just going to stitch it on all sides of that pocket. I then decided to add a stitch down the center of the pocket just so the pocket wouldn't be flimsy and hang open and also add some structure. So now we're ready to start on the leather working part of this project. And at this point, the aprons are pretty basic and I still love the way that they're coming out so far, but I really think that these details are going to take it to the next step. So essentially to come up with these, I'll kind of lay them out here on my grid map. So if you're trying to replicate this, you'll kind of know the sizes I use, but I literally just eyeballed <laughs> the designs. I folded it in half and then cut it out so I would get a symmetrical piece on both sides. And this is the quantity for one of uh, the aprons. So again, this is my first time working with leather. So take everything I do here with a grain of salt and just know that there are definitely professionals out there that uh, work with leather. And I just did a bit of research on my own and instead of investing a ton of money in tools, that I may or may not use again, depending on whether or not I like this craft. I am using a lot of tools that I just have on hand. So for the leather working, these are the tools that, from my understanding, are gonna be the most helpful. So I just have a lightweight hammer. I think a mallet, like a rubber mallet would be best, but I don't have one, so I'm just using a lightweight hammer. I've got a spray bottle, this does mist, and this is something that Anthony bought for his plants. <laughs> I have just a standard box cutter, an X-Acto knife, and an awl from my toolkit. Now, the only other thing that I bought to go along with the leather was this die casting set, and it's just a basic alphabet and one or zero through nine numbers and it just came with this little tool where you pop these boys on and then you just hammer in and it'll stamp the leather. So that's the only other thing that I picked up and this was I think like 12 or $15 for this set. So I figured, you know, I could probably use something like this in the future even for other crafts. So to me, it was worth it to just invest in a basic set like this. Now, because I want to specifically put dates into the leather, I wanted to have like a dot to separate the, the numbers. So right here, I just have, it's a little hex head from my iFixit kit. So I'm not buying anything extra, just using what I have on hand. Now, again, I did buy, this is vegetable tanned leather, I believe. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but this big piece of leather cost me about $20. 
and I have plenty to work with so I have room to make mistakes and it was inexpensive so it's a little bit less intimidating to work with. So I'm just gonna get started with laying out some of my pattern pieces and cutting them out. And I've seen a lot of people like trace out the shape and then cut it afterwards. So that's what I'm gonna try. So I'm just using my awl. And just so you know, I'm like barely putting any pressure on this. Like even less pressure than I would if I was like writing. I don't know if that's, oh yeah. So you can see kind of the light outline that that made. Okay, so I have all of my pieces traced out and I think what I'm gonna do first is just kind of cut this down to a manageable piece of leather so that way I'm not fumbling. So now I'm going to cut out my individual pieces. So next we are going to sand the sides and Anthony is going to help me do that. And all we're going to do is essentially like wet the leather and then add friction with either wood or plastic, but something smooth and non-abrasive. And that's really how you get that like waxed finish on the sides. So that's what we're gonna do next. So because this work takes a lot of muscle and my hands are very tired, Anthony's gonna help me with this, but. Not to contradict you immediately, but this takes no muscle because it's a light stroke and it's sandpaper. <laughs> Can we get Master Ugwe in there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm using a cat toy made of PVC. Try and get an even coating of the water so it's not like super damp, but it's moist enough. Hmm. It didn't work? Didn't quite do it this time. Ooh, it's like coming up on the edges. Yeah, I said it would do that. All right, <clears throat> we're here to game the system. Uh, when in doubt, let's use a Dremel tool. Uh, I did this on a practice piece. That's the result. Seems to be much smoother. Doesn't like, doesn't come up with that edge when you have to push with the our uh, <laughs> makeshift burnishing tool. So I'm gonna try this. That's a little better. Nice. So here are all the pieces with the burnished edges. So it'll have like a nice shiny finish on the edges. And this is just water right now and it'll dry and then it'll fade into the same color. So next I am going to cut the holes on the aprons for the eyelets. And the eyelets, these pieces here, are going to go in like this, and then this will hook into the apron. So I'm going to start working on that part because it's getting a little late and we're gonna have to hammer on concrete. So for the eyelets, we're going to be putting one in each of these corners, and then we're gonna have two down here in these corners here. And then our straps will be looped through there. So I have the pieces that have the barrel attached to them and I'm just going to line these up where I want. You're gonna need a pen or some kind of writing utensil. And I'm just feeling, cause I don't want this to sit on where my seams are. So probably about there. And then you're going to trace that inner circle of the barrel like so. Not pretty, but it gets the job done. And I'm just gonna draw across and make sure that that is in the same spot. I'm just lining the top edge of my apron up with one of the lines. And then I see the top of my circle, it's right about there. And line it up where the top of my barrel is there. And I'm just going to pick a spot that I'm happy with. The next step is to cut out 
the, these holes that you just put into the fabric. And I did test this on a piece of scrap fabric first to make sure I was happy with the way that these were installed and also make sure that I was confident in what I was doing. I've done this before, but only on a crocheted project and with crochet, you don't have to like cut into it because there are inherently holes already in your project. Unfortunately, it doesn't have to be perfect, but then what you'll do, and because the fabric can slightly stretch, is you will put the barrel through that hole, just like that. And then you will follow the instructions on the packaging and install the eyelets. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I can give this to Anthony so he can go do this part for me. So the next step is I am going to take these little pieces. As you can see, I already did these three here, but I am going to stamp them with some dates. And first we have to slightly wet the leather. Just like that. And we're gonna switch out the die piece and we'll do this all the way along. And there we go. So we're almost finished. I'm going to stamp a few more pieces with some initials and then we'll start assembling the apron. So I am done with all the stamping that I wanna do. So now we need to punch some holes in the fabric pieces and then we can start assembling the aprons. So these pieces are going to fold in half like this. So I'm just gonna poke a hole using this awl like that. Same as right here, just like that. So I have those two holes right there. And then this end, similar concept. This is just going to be folded in half over this end, like so. We can just take this all and poke it through right there. So I'm going to do that for all of these. And similar to before, I am just eyeballing where I want these to go and I'm placing these down and then I'm going to mark where I want them to go. So now that we have the holes punched into these, we'll start with the easiest first. So we have the rivet rivet on the leather and then we'll put the base here and then we're going to hammer it into place using the kit that we picked up. So here's what the detailing looks like with it all attached. So next, the last step is to get the leather onto the straps and making sure that we do them in the right order <laughs> because these pieces here are going to act as stoppers. So before we put any rivets in, we need to make sure that we have our hardware installed. So this is just going to slip over the top. And then this piece is just gonna be folded in half like so. And I'm just gonna kind of give it a little bit of memory there. And then I am going to grab two rivets because these can snap into place before you hammer them in. At the front of my leather piece so I can insert my two rivets, which this is like the good side of my rivets. I want to make sure my hardware stays in. And then I'm just going to thread the holes of my fabric and then fold it in half through the leather, just like that. And then I'm going to squeeze it and snap the other side of the rivet in, just like that. So this is ready to hammer into place. So I'm gonna do the other four straps. And now these pieces are ready to be hammered in. So this is what the apron looks like all assembled at the top. So now we just have to add these little bits to the other end of the strap so they don't come unraveled. And before we do that, we have to make sure that these are woven through how we want. So essentially we're gonna come from the top of one side and a cross body to the other side. And you're gonna come from the wrong side to the right side through, and then we can assemble this. So now that we have this end, just like what we did at the top, I'll take my rivet, 
And fortunately it's okay if the straps are all twisted up right now because we have a free spinning top and nothing is like glued down. So we should be able to adjust as necessary. So that's one. We just wanna make sure it's like straight up and down before we hammer it into place. And again, we're gonna come from this top part through this one from the wrong side to the right side. And again, taking our rivet, going through, catching the hole in our fabric, going through the other side of the leather, and then snapping our cap into place. So I am so happy with the way that these aprons came out. I honestly was on the fence <laughs> about midway through the project whether or not these were going to be worthy of gifting. I was afraid it was going to kind of look too handmade if that makes sense and just kind of a, a you know here's some aprons, good luck. <laughs> I really, really wanted to make these look nice, but also be super cool looking. And I'm just over the moon with, with, with how they came out. I would love to try leather working again, maybe next time with some tools that are actually designed to be used with leather working. As you saw with this video, I really embrace the use what you have on hand. <laughs> and I think it came out really well for my first time ever doing anything like this and I think if I stick with it and get the proper tools and whatnot then I'll definitely have a better outcome. I absolutely want to give a shout out and this is not sponsored in any way to Tandy Leather. They the people in the shop were so incredibly helpful for somebody like me who I explained that I didn't want to spend a lot of money on tools and whatnot because I was afraid that if I didn't like the craft that I don't want to invest a lot of money up front and they absolutely understood. They offered to let me come into their store and use all of their tools and have somebody coach me through the process, which I was just like, that's amazing. And by the way, that was for no charge. So if you yourself are interested in getting into like leather working or anything like that, be sure to check out your local Tandy Leather because they were absolutely amazing. I also want to say a big congratulations to my brother-in-law and my future sister-in-law. I am so incredibly happy that y'all found each other and I'm very excited to see where y'all go in life and I hope these aprons will bring you guys joy and get used often to make warm meals for y'all's bellies. Well, that's it guys. So <laughs> I just wanted to share this and I hope y'all enjoyed this and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day or evening wherever you are and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye!